Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Career Expo. Today we have our manufacturing um, panel. I want to introduce to you um, two of our three presenters today. So joining us and leading the way is Eric Haven from LDI. And then we also have Herb Mason from Manitowoc Tool and Machining. So I am going to let Eric uh, get started and take it away. Hey, thank you very much, Carrie. Welcome to everyone today. Thank you for choosing manufacturing, uh, the career cluster for your career expo experience. Uh, my name is Eric Haven. I uh, work for LDI Industries in Manitowoc. Uh, we're a small family owned company located on the, on the north side. Uh, myself, I went through the youth apprenticeship program uh, about 20, 23 years ago up at Lincoln High School. Um, LDI has been actively participating in the YA program um, again for about uh, 25 years. Um, we've sponsored youth apprentices in the drafting and engineering design program, in the machining program, uh, welding, and also industrial maintenance. So um, the careers that are out there, the pathways that we're going to talk about today really lead into youth apprenticeship, lead into the skilled trades. And these are very high demand and, and very lucrative positions. So this is a great way for young men and women to get a head start on a future career pathway in manufacturing. We currently have two youth apprentices, one um, from Balders, and he is in a one-year uh, manufacturing tech program. He comes in, in the mornings. And then we have a industrial maintenance youth apprentice who comes to LDI uh, from Manitowoc Lutheran High School. So these young men and women that are in our, in our program uh, are able to get teamed up with mentors, work throughout the plant, and get to see the latest and greatest manufacturing today. Um, one of the goals for, for us as an employer is to develop that youth apprentice for them to see what the trades are, what the possibilities are for after high school. We understand that there's a lot of different pathways out there. This is about career exploration and you being able to figure out if this is a pathway that you want to go down. Myself, being a, a, a graduate of the Youth Apprenticeship Program, I went uh, back out to LTC, did my four-year state registered adult apprenticeship program. The big selling point of doing one of the youth apprenticeships that lead into the registered adult apprenticeship is you get credit from LTC, you get work hour credit towards that 8,000-hour program. So an, a two-year machine tool student, when they get done, will have about a year, give or take, of, of, of credit uh, between schooling and work hours. Um, there's a lot of local employers, and Carrie can probably go through those, that are involved in youth apprenticeship that do have students, but they're not able to be here today. And collectively, we understand as employers that we want to provide that opportunity to you guys to see, to, to sh showcase what we do why we do it, why our customers are, are important and see that you can make a great living and, and, and have that future career pathway. Herb, did you wanna chime in? Yeah, uh, my name is Herb Mason. I am the uh, safety manager at Manitowoc Tool and Machining. Again, uh, a family-owned business, um, and we are what's called a job shop. We have about 140 CNC machines here, and uh, we are constantly looking for people to operate those machines. Uh, we are involved in the uh, YA program. We, at present, don't have a YA here. Um, we uh, attempted to start one in August, but that it didn't work out. But uh, we will continue to be involved in the YA program. And like Eric said, I have to agree, this is a great opportunity uh, for students to explore a career path. And you can make very good money uh, in manufacturing. Um, we have we also have an adult apprenticeship program where you can transition from YA to uh, 
the adult apprenticeship where uh, once you have that journeyman card, that's like a golden ticket to uh, a very stable uh, career in, in life. Um, so I heartily encourage all of you to look into manufacturing uh, as a career. Uh, we need you. Great, thanks, Herb. Um, we're gonna also welcome Kyle Schlenker. He's from Parker Hannafin. Um, so Kyle, if you want to jump in, maybe just talk about some of the different areas and opportunities within manufacturing, what you would recommend to high school students to um, get a jump start. what should they be doing now in high school? And maybe talk a little bit about your job and what you like and about the field of work in manufacturing. Yeah, definitely, thanks. Uh, well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, you know, again, my name is Kyle Schlenker. I'm the plant manager for uh, the facility here in Manitowoc at Parker Hannafin. We have we have two plants. My plant is over on 24th Street by the airport here. Um, just want to encourage you guys. I'm going to talk a little bit about kind of my background and story, um, but then also talk a little bit about opportunities and the the YA program and kind of what we have going on. Um, we've really gotten involved in the YA program over the last a uh, few years, I want to say maybe about four or five years now, uh, where we've really kind of heavily invested in that. Um, I think in the, we were just looking back at this, I think we've had 31 students come through uh, the YA program uh, at one point or another in the last four years, I think since 2017. Um, so we've had a, a, a lot of students come in and, and I think we have about 11 or 12 here now. Um, so we have, you know, different, different functions. We've got maintenance, engineering, uh, a couple of people in marketing, IT, uh, production associates, um, machining. Uh, we have just about, <clears throat> just about any discipline um, that you can think of. We've got an opportunity for, uh, you know, a YA to, to be in here. And then we have a few people that have transitioned to uh, a registered apprenticeship program. I think Herb talked about that a little bit. Um, so we've had some, some really good luck with that. And I think in the same time frame since about 2017, I think we've had about 16 people that um, either have graduated or are currently in a registered apprenticeship program uh, here in the plant. And we have people that are, are doing it for uh, journeyman tool makers. Uh, we've got the new mechatronics program uh, with LTC that we're, we have a couple of people in right now. Uh, we have uh, electricians and electromechanical associates, uh, so different team members that are in those programs as well. Um, so we have a, a lot of things happening with that, and I would echo what these other other two guys said, uh, where you know we have that need for continued engagement, continued involvement, um, and, and really just have a great opportunity for um, you know anyone for that matter, but certainly for uh, for you guys looking for uh, what what is that career? What is that that long term thing? Um, and I would even say with the YA program, we've had several people that have come through, and I'm sure Carrie has dozens and dozens of experiences where uh, students have come in and realize that it isn't something that they want to do, or maybe they tried one field or one discipline and wanted to do something else. And and I think that's absolutely fantastic. Uh, I think it's good to get that experience. You get you know, credit for it, you get money for it, um, you get real real work experience, life experience, um, but then you also get to figure out maybe what you, you do or don't wanna do. Um, we had one, uh, one person that came in, um, Mackenzie, she was in maintenance for a couple of years and, and she did a good job with that. And, uh, and once she graduated, she said, I wanna go into, into machining. So she's in a, a apprenticeship program and she's moved into our CNC uh, area for machining. So it was awesome that she gained a lot of experience on the maintenance side and seeing those, but then also that she found some other things that she wanted to do. So I think that's that's really cool. Um, I'll talk a little bit. Carrie, is it okay if I, I share a couple of slides here? Does that work? Absolutely. All right, let's see if I can um, share my presentation. Okay, <clears throat> so well, that's not the, can, can you guys see that okay? Or is it showing like the, uh, that's fine? All right. Okay, um, <clears throat> so this is just a little bit about, you know, my background and, and, uh, and what that looks like. Um, you know, so again, I'm the plant manager here. I've, I've had a lot of different positions at my time in Parker. 
Um, I, I do report to our division operations manager. So he resides in the Cleveland, Ohio area. Um, so I have, I have a boss that's, uh, you know, not, not local. Uh, he's, you know, several states away. So it's kind of interesting. He manages uh, several different facilities. He oversees several different facilities. So you know, I've got kind of that remote uh, responsibility to him and, and keeping him uh, involved in what's happening. Um, I do have, you know, pretty much the whole plant that reports to me. Um, so all functional areas and responsible for lots of different things. And I've been with Parker uh, since 2007. Um, those are a list of the, uh, the positions that I've held. I started as an engineer and I'll go a little bit into that here in the next slide. Um, but I've had different experiences in engineering operations and, uh, materials. I was our materials manager for about a year and a half as well. Um, I've moved around a couple of times. I, I moved up here, uh, from Ohio. That's, that's where I grew up. I went to school in Indiana and then, uh, moved up here. Uh, after I graduated and uh, moved down to Davenport, Iowa in 2011, and then came back up here as the plant manager in 2013. Um, at the end of or kind of doing uh, going through 2020 and then through most of uh, 2021 or halfway through 2021, I did take on some responsibility in our Batesville, Mississippi plant. So um, I've had an opportunity to travel all over the country um, with Parker and, and just seeing different things and, uh, have had a lot of, a lot of different experiences. I, I've really enjoyed my time at Parker. Um, I graduated with an aerospace engineering degree from Purdue. Uh, so I graduated in December of 2006 and then in the spring of 2007, uh, moved up here to take uh, my position as a, a process engineer. And um, in my day-to-day, -day, you know, roles and responsibilities uh, really reside with a lot of, you know, day-to-day -day challenges, short-term challenges, uh, as well as long-term challenges too. So, you know, we're really trying to balance, you know, what, what are we doing today to be successful? Um, what's happening? What are those challenges that we deal with uh, on a day-to-day -day basis? And then also, how are we positioning ourselves uh, in the long-term to make sure that we're growing, to make sure we're supporting growth, that we're developing people um, all of those different things. Uh, so it's, I, I love it. Uh, it's, it's a huge challenge. Um, but uh, a, a lot of what I do is with people. I manage people, I manage processes and help, you know, people to be successful. Um, I try to do the best I can with uh, making sure that we're in a position, um, you, you know, to grow, to be successful, whatever that may be. And so when I was in high school, one of the things that really helped me out tremendously was I was involved in a lot of different activities. I had the uh, opportunity to be involved in extracurriculars, you know, sports and just other programs through school. I was involved in, in my church. Um, I had just different things that I was able to get exposed in. And then I kind of carried that into my college career as well. Uh, and that really helped out tremendously where <clears throat> I didn't really even know what operations was. Um, when I um, was interviewing with Parker and then when I got here and, and I just, I fell in love with the challenges. I fell in love with, you know, connecting with people and processes and, and just love manufacturing. Um, I, I like to know how we make things. And I think it's awesome in Manitowoc and Northeast Wisconsin, how many different um, unique uh, businesses and manufacturing companies we have that, that make all sorts of stuff. Um, that just really intrigues me. So I've loved that. I've enjoyed doing that. And, um, and, and really, again, getting involved in a lot of different things in high school helped me to be successful uh, in this, this position and throughout my career um, with Parker. So um, again, I've um, uh, been involved and do a lot with influencing and developing uh, teams and people and um, you know, trying to make sure we're spending the right money and the right time in the right place. Um, and then most of my position and most of my responsibilities are with leadership. So you know, I would encourage you guys to get involved. I'd encourage you guys to uh, be a part of, of a team, whether it's now or uh, as you, you know, continue to grow and, and when you get into the job and the workforce, uh, working with people is a big deal. Um, and then continue to, to better yourself. Don't, don't settle for the status quo. And, you know, my, my position, I've had a lot of different experiences. I was moving around all the time, kind of raising my hand to take on uh, new things. And, uh, and I know people at Parker love seeing that. Uh, I'm sure these other guys will, will, will say, yeah, we, we want people to get involved. We want you guys to get involved with the YA program and whatever that may be, but, uh, you know, take some risks. Uh, don't, um, you know, don't hesitate to do that. I think that's, that's so helpful for us to, to continue to grow and um, that can have a big impact for you long-term as well. So that's my short little, uh, little spiel on, uh, 
on my background and, and a little bit about uh, about me. And um, I, just kind of last thing at Parker here, we have we have about 300 total people. Um, I think we have 35 salary uh, individuals and then about 265 hourly associates, uh, three shift operation, 260,000 square feet. Uh, we do machining, assembly, uh, forming, bending, uh, plating, heat treating. Uh, we, we do a lot of different things and constantly, constantly trying new stuff, constantly getting involved, uh, do a lot of lean manufacturing. We, we do a lot of team events and Kaizen events and new processes and automation and all sorts of, of uh, really interesting things. So appreciate the time. Thanks for, uh, for letting me be a part of this. Great. Thanks, Kyle. Um, can one of you maybe talk about just the work itself? Um, sometimes, you know, I'll get questions from students about, you know, manufacturing is dirty and dangerous and maybe talk a little bit more about the current opportunities that exist in manufacturing um, locally. And then also maybe talk about how the need, you know, with that increasing, um, what would be like an average starting wage? Herb, go ahead. So a couple of things I'd like to mention, it, you know, you've probably seen factories in history books. Uh, they're nothing like that nowadays. Okay, a modern machine shop uh, is very clean. Everything is computerized. Um, so if you like computers, you're in the right place in a production facility like ours. All of our gauging is computerized that we use to measure parts. Um, the machines run on computers and we need people to program uh, those. Um, the, the work overall is very clean. It's very safe. Uh, modern machines have excellent guarding that protects the operator from the point of contact. So uh, injuries are, are way down. Um, it's our shop is heated in the winter, air conditioned in the summer. I'm sure the other guys are too. Um, it's a very comfortable uh, place uh, to work. It can be challenging. Um, we're a little different than the other two guys here. Uh, MTM is what's called a job shop. Um, we don't have a product line like LDI and, and Parker have. We make things for other people. And we have a very wide uh, customer base. And it can be very interesting. You never know what's going to come through the door next. So uh, a lot of new projects underway. Um, and we're constantly growing. And we constantly uh, need help in that regard. Great, and if somebody wants to touch maybe on that, the need locally, and then um, just the roundabout with the wage piece, and then we'll open it up for questions from the students. Would you like me to chime in, Carrie? Ab go right ahead. As far as the machining goes, uh, you've got different pathways. Some individuals, some job shops are more of a prototype one-off scenario where student is working in a tool room type setting where they're doing an art depart. Um, if you look at um, a federal mogul, LDI, Parker, generally speaking, we, we get paid by producing volumes of, of parts. We have indirect positions in a tool room type setting, but those are, those are a very small portion. Um, most of the machining in our greater Manitowoc area is in a production machining type environment. And what that means is that you have a person that's setting up the machine, operating the machine. In some cases, programming may be done at the machine or, or by that journey worker. In other cases in a production shop, it may be done offline by manufacturing engineering and then downloaded. Um, the students get to get the hands-on experience and see how tools cut learn how to use dial calipers, thread gauging, actually uh, taking raw material, could be a casting, could be bar stock, and removing the material off of there and producing a part to a blueprint. Uh, we didn't touch on it yet, but 
if you, a blueprint is really how we operate, what the customer wants that part specification to be. So um, in, in our industry, we're dealing with very close tolerance parts. Um, Federal Mogul, they make piston rings for uh, engines, diesel engines, gas engines, and the tolerancing is incredible. It's down to microns. Um, and, and so the blueprint reading aspect is something that you would get in the machining program out of LTC. LTC would, would, would support that as part of the youth apprenticeship program. Uh, you do get some, also some hands-on out there, could be mills, could be lays to, again, support that. Um, but within LDI and with all the other companies, when you come in the door, you're in, a, you're in an adult environment, but you get uh, with those expectations, but you get the one-on-one -on -one training to really see what the trade is about. We don't figure you in to be productive. That's not what the program is about. It's about you learning about the skilled trade. And we understand that after a year, you've only been on the job for maybe 450 hours. At two years, you're at maybe 900 to 1,000 hours. And you'll be working with people that could be in the trade for 5, 10, 15, 20, 20 plus years. Um, as far as growth and opportunity and, and earnings, as a general rule in the times we're in today, general uh, coming in the door production type person, you're probably in the... 15 to 18 dollars an hour 15 to 20 dollars an hour again it depends on what your background is um, the great benefit of the youth apprenticeship program is, is you come in the door and, and you get that jump start it's it's a huge step up you've proven yourself to a to an to an employer and hopefully they're going to make that investment in you most local employers will pay for the apprenticeship, the tuition, pay for the books, have that reimbursement, make that investment in you. Because we understand that it's a, it's a long-term commitment. And ultimately, it's going to be a win-win uh, win -win for us and a win-win for, for you. Um, just because you go into a production type, say you're set up, operate on a screw machine or CNC machine, doesn't mean that you're in that job forever. Once you get a journey worker degree program, you can go from production into maintenance, production, maintenance, and supervision, um, into quality. You could go into the, into the office support side of it, go into uh, material planning, go into scheduling. There are so many jobs. There's probably 20 jobs that support that production type job. It's, it's, it's incredible. So... The great thing about manufacturing and, and what, what we do is things are always changing. There's always room for growth. Uh, the technology, as both Herb and Kyle talked about, is really, really amazing. Um, every company here in the Lakeshore is spending millions of dollars each year on new equipment. And we do that to improve the process, to control the process, to modernize it, to get some of the redundant processes out that maybe people don't want to do. And, and, and get them doing higher, higher value work. So you may be programming, you may be repairing, you may be monitoring, uh, but to get some of that repetitive type, type work out. Um, as far as the job outlook goes, we've had people um, from, from the area that got their journey workers card that went down south, went to the east coast, went to the west coast. And Wisconsin is one of the leaders in the nation in apprenticeship programs. So once you do a youth apprenticeship, if you, if you roll into a four-year registered apprenticeship program, that's like a bachelor's degree, combining real-world knowledge, real-world experience, and the tech college. And myself, I've got the registered apprenticeship, went back out to LTC, did my supervisory management degree program. So continuously learning, continuously involving. And most employers will be supportive of that. Um, the baby boomers that are out there, a lot of people are 55 plus, they're retiring, they're gonna go fishing every day, they're gonna head up north, um, they're gonna find a, find a sandy beach somewhere. And a lot of great people in every company want to take the trade that they've learned that they've worked their lives in and want to mentor that next, that next, uh, next, next group of, of uh, people. So there's, there's a lot of really great things going on and uh, we look forward to your interest in, in manufacturing. Um, 
as far as youth apprenticeship goes, you know, we're coming into that open enrollment kind of period for your junior or senior year. Um, and, you know, it's something that once that, once, you know, uh, once your junior year goes by and you become a senior, then you're looking at a one-year program. But say, uh, for some reason, if you didn't get placed and you have an interest, reach out to Carrie, reach out to your high school counselor, say, I want, I want a tour. I want to see what Parker does. I want to see what LDI does, see what Jagman does. And we would be happy to have you in, in, a, in a job shadow. So... Thank you, Carrie. Great. All right. I know, Herb, you want to say something? I want to leave a couple minutes for questions. So we'll have um, Herb, Kyle, okay. last thoughts. I just, uh, just to add to Eric's um, one thing uh, the area businesses um, are realizing is we have to be flexible. Um, there's all types of shifts nowadays. Uh, you can work a regular eight hour shift. You can work four tens, you can work three twelves, work Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 12 hours, have the rest of the week off. There's a lot of companies in the area, you know, are very accommodating to different schedules. Um, so that's something else to keep in mind as well. Yeah, just last thoughts for me. Um, one of our youth apprentices transitioned, he was in maintenance, he transitioned into a, in a registered apprentice program. Um, he probably walked out of uh, high school, you know, with a full-time job pulling in at least 60K a year. Um, he's he's going to be closer to, you know, by the time he's done with his, his RA program, close to that $100,000 a year with overtime. And we've got a 15% profit sharing program that everyone gets. So, um, <clears throat> you know, for, for a student that's, uh, you know, it, by 22 or 23, when you're pulling in that kind of money, um, you know, I paid a lot of money to go to college for, for four and a half years that I had to pay back. And, you know, now, now some of these YAs and RAs are, are it's all for free as, uh, I think some of these guys were talking about what we're, we're paying for that. So, um, it's not going away. Uh, skilled trades are, are all over the place. It's, it's so important. And there's just, there's so many unique and, and neat things to be able to do with it. So, uh, like I said, get involved, try different things. And, uh, and there's a lot of, lot of different problems and opportunities to, you know, uh, try whatever, whatever it may be. So yeah, there, there's some good opportunities and certainly good compensate, compensation with it. Great. Thank you guys. We appreciate your time. Um, I'll just add a couple of things as far as you mentioned a lot about youth apprenticeship and registered apprenticeship. We are now opening up applications. Um, for youth apprenticeship, they are due on February 16th, and you can go to yawisconsin.org and you'll see the application. You can also talk to uh, Lisa Klein at Two Rivers, Bonnie Przeniak at Lincoln, um, and the rest of you, I am in the schools, so you can definitely talk to your uh, counselor and they can connect us. We also, I would encourage you to look at inspirewi.org. Um, that is another place these guys mentioned some company tours. Um, so we have uh, quite a few manufacturers that locally are involved in that program um, where you can request to do job shadows and um, tours, um, mock interviews virtually and in person. So lots of opportunities for that as well. So we will just open it up for any questions that anybody has. So if you have questions, um, we just ask you on mute and go ahead and ask those. All right, any questions? No, I have a question. All right, so again, I would encourage you to get involved. Youth Apprenticeship is a great opportunity, as these guys mentioned several times, um, to get that path to try out. Even if you apply for production, you have an opportunity for a foot in the door to see what you're interested in. And there's lots of opportunities and places to go from there. Uh, we are having a registered apprenticeship information night as well. Um, which is on January 19th. So again, yawisconsin.org is where you can find that information. Can I touch on one more thing, Carrie? Yep. Uh, as the students look at their junior and senior year, um, academically, what we look at for in the skilled trades, the math, the science, the group problem solving, um, those, those, those core classes along with trades related classes can really help set you up for after graduation. Uh, the youth apprenticeship program 
it's a competitive process. So within, within industrial maintenance, you might have 15 students apply. You may have eight students get placed in the rest, either look at different programs or apply for the, for the next year. So it is a competitive process. Just because you apply does not mean that you are gonna get in. Um, part of that application process, we see your past grades, we see your attendance, we see references, and the basic employability skills is really, really important. That's really the foundation that we wanna build upon. So attendance, punctuality, being on time, um, being ready to work, uh, is, is safety is very, very important. So uh, we understand that you have two years here um, to be able to look at different pathways. Um, like Kyle mentioned over at Parker, they had a YA that changed pathways. I had a YA in 2014. He was a great, uh, a great machining candidate uh, as a junior, got done with his junior year, decided to go into plumbing, did a one-year plumbing uh, apprenticeship in his senior year, maritime plumbing nabbed him, and he did a five-year plumbing apprenticeship. And he absolutely loves it. So while it wasn't a direct, say, win to help LDI, it was a win for when my when I when I need a plumbing issue fixed, I can call Maritime Plumbing, and now they have a journeyman plumber that can come fix my fix my toilet. So um, we're all in this together. All the employers, all the industries. Um, I'm kind of dating myself here, but when I went through the YA, there were six programs a number of decades ago. Now with Carrie's involvement in, in, in fostering the program and everything going on at the state level, there's 30 plus different career pathways. So manufacturing has never been more exciting. There's never been more opportunity now um, than there ever has been. So get involved, get interested in it. And it is, uh, it is a great, great pathway. Myself, I'm married, I have two kids, um, have, a, have a nice home, uh, stable, stable life. And, and these, these career opportunities can certainly do that for you. Great. I just want to thank you, Eric, Herb, and Kyle for your time today. Thank you to the students for attending. Um, and we wish everyone a wonderful afternoon. So thank you. Thank you very much.